most of you are pretty familiar with Cynthia Moss, but I just want to give you a couple little facts. Nearly 40 years studying elephants and working for their conservation, which is just an incredible uh, dedication, probably more so than most um, scientists working in the field, no matter what animal they're studying. In 1972, she started the Amboseli Elephant Research Project. And what I tell people is, just about everything we know about elephants has come from this project. And I've been saying that for years and years. And then they came out with this incredible book, The Amboseli Elephants, to demonstrate to us in print that in fact, most of what we know about elephants has come from this project. <laughs> so this is an absolute must have. And uh, I think somewhere on the website, it they say, well, it might not be a coffee table book. Absolutely, it's a coffee table book. <laughs> this is an incredible book. And if, again, if you're interested in elephants, it's a, a fabulous book to have. And then, um, as I mentioned, well, in 2001, they created the Amicelli Trust for Elephants. And I think that just demonstrates really the forethought that has gone into this project from the very beginning, that making sure that there is funding for this project to continue on long into the future, the conservation of the animals in the area, and really the research and conservation of elephants all over Africa. It really doesn't matter who you talk to who's working on elephants, just about everybody has learned how to research elephants and some of the important components of their conservation from this project. So I don't want to take up any more of her time because she's got some incredible things to share with us. So please welcome Cynthia Moss. How many years is it now, Colleen, that we've done so? 16. Um, just every year, you, they, they work so hard to organize this and every penny comes to um, our project, which um, uh, I really do thank you all for doing this. So I have a, a, a very close connection with this zoo. In fact, it's probably one of the few zoos I now have a close connection with. Um, and I, I, I do um, feel strongly that you do take care of your elephants in the right way and that they're, this is probably the best zoo in, in the country for it, it, the ma management the way you manage your elephants. We were fairly sure we were going to have a baby boom, but we, we never expected it to be quite as as uh, amazing as it has been. So um, we had no, we had one calf born in all of 2011. Just it was just you know. That, I don't know how she managed, because that means she conceived in 2009 and managed to keep the calf alive, uh, keep the calf, you know, in her pregnancy. And um, anyway, on October 12th, 2011, the first calf was born after after the drought. That was conceived, we knew it was conceived in, uh, in, in, in December, January of uh, 2010. And this is Kumquat, one big old, big female, and that was she was the first to give birth. And then the baby started raining out of the sky. <laughs> they, uh, this is the second one. This was Angelina's calf, and that, neither of those are Angelina. Those are aloe mothers or babysitters who take care of um, the calves. And they were so beside themselves with excitement about these calves because they hadn't had any calves to take care of. They probably even forgot what little calves were like. So these little uh, ten, you know, eight-year-old females you know, who aren't mature yet—that's their job is to take care of little calves. And they were they were just you know so excited when the, this is Begoria and her beautiful big big them born that day, which was a big calf. And this is one of our most beautiful females. This is Theodora, who I write about a lot in Elephant Memories. And she's a big old female, but she she's huge. She has the biggest tusks I've ever seen on a female. And she's had a little male calf. And that's Ebony, that's um, Echo's uh, 
grandson there. Ebony's calf. And I think that's an Odessa and her calf. And her, oh no, I know who this, no, it wasn't Odessa. This was, this was sort of what happens to these young guys. This was uh, Ismay and her brand new calf. And that is Ismay's older calf who, who had his mother all to himself for, <laughs> for a long time. And, uh, it, you know, they, they get, you can see how <laughs> sort of disturbed they are. Here's this new calf, and so they come, they get extra cuddly. <laughs> Especially when they're males. They don't know, the females seem to accept it and get so excited. The males, you come and lean on their mother. <laughs> and they, they say, so you haven't forgotten me, I'm giving them so the dynamics are fun in, in watching all the things that go on. Yeah, so this was Ismay, and I forgot what his name is, but and that's Ebony, again, with her beautiful calf. And this was Odessa, sorry, and her calf. Anyway, these are just wonderful. We, we have had so much fun being with these families. I just wanted to share the baby pictures with you. I, some families have as many as 10 calves, and I, it's just so delightful. It's just so renewing for us who went through that drought and watched all those calves, you know, and those adults dying to be able to go out and, and sit with a family that's so taken with these calves. All, everybody's excited and, and, um, and they're all you know, trying to take care of the calves and the calves are having so much fun. They get, they, they're so playful. They're all fat and healthy because we've had good grain. This was like another little calf who was very silly. <laughs> And then, uh, then on top of all that, we've had two albino, albino calves, um, and which we've never had in the, in the 40 years of, of the study. I don't know what's happened. So this is, um, you can see he's got, you now his skin isn't completely white, I guess, but anyway, he's, his hair is all white. You see his white tail hairs? That's what color it should be. The ear hair, and he's quite pink. He's very pink. It can, it's so hard to see his eye. We think we, we don't really quite know what color the eye is yet. So first, um, yeah, he there he is. He's very healthy. He, he was born and he's about four months old now. He doesn't seem to be having any trouble. The other one lives way out on the western side. We, we've only seen him once or twice and haven't been able to get a picture. But this was bright excitement. We've never had him not be in a cat before. And this is uh, this is the oldest female in the pop. The only one of the few who didn't die. She's about 64 herself, and this is she stopped breeding several years ago. Maybe that's one of the reasons she survived, is because she hadn't didn't have to produce any milk. Anyway, this, she's with her granddaughter here. So everybody takes care of the cats, and there's another owl mother taking care of them. It's not her cat. It's all reassurance and touching. And here, you know, the female on the left is Poppy, and that's her cat. But that's Poppy's younger sister getting all worried because the cat's falling into this <laughs> water hole. And here's another one, another one reaching, reaching back to reassure. That's another owl. It's not its mother reaching back with its trunk right into the mouth of the other one or on the mouth. Just, it's just all the behavior around these cats has been wonderful to watch. And even the youngest, I mean, she's taking, this one's only about three, two and a half, three years old, but she's still already taking care of a calf. And the calves themselves are just so full of the devil. <laughs> these are three of the three calves from Echo's family. And they've just been mud wallowing. And they, they're, there's seven of them in this family, and six of them are male, and only one is a female. But they, they uh, rush around together, and they, get, they just have so much fun. And I was really pleased. It's, it's Elliot, um, Echo's daughter Elliot, has the only female. But I'm really pleased to see that she holds her own. She really gets in there and has fights. And, Climbs on them. She does. She doesn't let them bully her at all. Yeah, they are climbing. 
the male, that's typical male cat They like, love to get into piles. You know, like <laughs> so there are four of them there. That's again the EVs. And Elliot's cat's right in there with them. <laughs> appreciate you uh, including all of those cats, <laughs> all of those wonderful baby pictures. I think we're all suckers for that. <laughs> but it is, as she said, it's a, it's a tough story and they're doing you know a lot of work, but it is a tremendous uphill battle. And so you know that is really why we're here and we hope that you are entertained and you've learned a lot and you're enjoying good food and wine. We still have lots of both. We're also bringing out coffee now so you can be stimulated as well. <laughs> but the goal here is to raise as much money as we possibly can for the Amicelli Elephant Trust. And so please now get up and <laughs> grab a pen and start uh, writing your bids. But Cynthia will be available for book signing if you'd like to purchase one or ten books and bring us